Hey there folks, and welcome back to the Akeni campaign. Last time we secured the province of Dorotriga, and something I didn't do last time, but I'm glad I don't need to do, is the uh, governor policy in both Dorotriga, sorry, Dorotrigia, I'll never get that right, and Dumnonia are already uh, cultural assimilation, because I already shared territory in both these provinces. One of the main reasons, actually, from a gameplay point of view, to kill uh, Durotriga the nation, who could have otherwise continued to provide me with a free, if slightly derpy, uh, four-unit four, four unit AI army that would wander around and usually just get killed at the start of every war. But uh, <laughs> putting that aside, let's go ahead and resume here. So last time, we did a huge amount of discussion about my plans for the north, and I will go ahead with those plans once the capital is moved. Moving the capital to Londinium also doesn't really change its safety. It's about as, as far away from the frontier, but it is more central in my nation, at least a little bit, right, um, than the very distant Wente Iconorum. So it'll be slightly faster to raise my levy and get them to the front line from Londinium. So that's a little handy. Something else I can do, not there, uh, here, is I can uh, do another uh, colonial venture um, now. In terms of various populations, I think the one that I probably need to work on here is the Durotrigans, because I just, you know, took their land. Uh, and there are, um, I'm fairly sure, yeah, there are, actually, hold on. There are Dabunians here in Kinetio. I thought I might be able to, because usually it picks the location where the, the provincial capital is, which is where I'd want the, um, the, the provincial colony to be as well. So maybe not Durotriga, actually. Who else could I do this for? that has like their capital is the same location or the provincial capital is the same location as their population. So uh, can I easily see this somehow? Yes, I can see it this way. So colonial occupation. So the Trinawantians are an option. Where are they at? I'm trying to remember. So they're down here. Uh, they're not going to be, well, hold on. Are there Trinawantians in Londinium? It had already found a colony in Londinium. Okay, let's actually see, let's just see what happens. Okay, Camelodunum. I thought I've, didn't I found? No, I, okay, I, I'm thinking of Dura Wernum. I founded a colony in Dura Wernum for the Contiochians. All right, uh, let's see, who else is available? Uh, Ordo Wheatians, who are um, up here, okay. Well, would it fa uh, found in Canoeum? Uh Okay, Canoeum. That so order uh, order Wheatons are a option. I just want to do it somewhere where there's a uh, provincial capital located there, just for maximum efficiency. I'd rather just have, especially while while a tribe, all of my population in every province be as centralized as possible for those city locations. Okay, um, the Dometians already have one. The Dumnonians already have one. The Cornoians, who are uh, where are the Cornoians? Probably around here, right? Where do you... Okay, there's no option. All right, so the Cronoians are kind of a diaspora. That's fine. And the Durotrigans, um, well, we already saw that wouldn't be in the right spot. So Leucomagus would be a colony location. I already ruled that out as a, a capital location because Canetio has the wonder. I suppose Canetio doesn't have to be the capital. I could make Leucomagus the provincial capital. It's as good, if not a slightly better capital location, provincial capital location than Canetio. But I feel quite kind of drawn to Canetio being the capital because it's got Stonehenge, which is cool. Plus, it's also in a good location. Plus, it's been my provincial capital for the whole game and uh, or for most of the game. And I just feel a nostalgia for Canetio having that little icon. So. We're going to go back over to the uh, Ordo Wheatians and go ahead and found that colony in Canoeum, which we'll double check is the proper location. Yes, Canoeum 2 1. Yep. Canoeum, we'll, we'll get that in a moment. All right, the arrival of a Kenny settlers has hardly endured the local population. Okay, we read this uh, event a few times. I'm not going to reread this every single time. You know what this event says. It is for the best. There we go. Now we've got a big population. Now Kanoeum uh, is suddenly a major location for my, my people here, and probably my next city build location. Um, in fact, uh, let's see here. No, that's not the right. I need 250 gold, which I definitely have. And actually, next month I could found a city. 
But we're going to hold our horses here because we want to uh, move our capital, our actual capital, to Lindidium with that political influence. So that's probably, Kernoium is going to be our next investment of political influence after Lindidium. All right, that's fine. I already did the uh, the infrastructure stuff around here, so that's uh, that's totally good. One thing I could do, actually, is uh, move my slaves around. My slaves are all spread out in a really inconsistent way. I kind of want to wait until the whole province, or I keep saying that, until the whole region of Britannia is under my sole control, just for maximum ease of like population reorganization. Um, so I might wait until after the Great Northern Wars. Plus, it gives me something to do in what will probably be a bit of downtime after that while I consolidate the region. I've been, uh, you may have noticed, rushing in terms of how I play in an aggressive way, trying to secure territory very quickly. Even though I said at the start of the series I'm not going for the perfidious Albion achievement, you'd be, uh, you would be forgiven if you thought that I was just by watching my gameplay. I'm actually just rushing because I want to secure the region before I do more substantial economic stuff. Plus, becoming, uh, finishing the tribal reform missions will be critical to being able to have an actual kind of functional economy. So all these things add up together. Anyways, let's resume. And also in a year, we'll have to keep an eye on that October 1st omen date. A few times I've gotten lucky, but uh, it may not happen every time. We also have some more resources here. Yes, we do. Hello. All right, a Lato Bikia over here wants some of my wood. That's fine. And uh, I think I also have, yep, the leather. People want my leather too. And Amnetia want it. Who else? Uh, Katain. Katanatia want it. Uh, Rarika want it. And Santonia want it. Fizz, I'll trade with the, the Namnites. Sell them the leather. That's good. My economy is booming. Super, super solid. Uh, I think keeping this on high tax is definitely worth it <laughs> for the slave output. And once I reorganize my slaves, we're going to really improve our economy. I've you know, I've, I've been trying not to worry too much about the micromanagement because this is a live series. And I, I know that pacing is something that in a series like this is always in danger of just chronic problems. So, oh, what happened here? Asakunia Kaletia died of dysentery. She was the researcher. That's a shame. Uh, who was she from? What family? She was from the Kaletiae family, the new one. All right. Um, now... The research position, we can pretty freely move someone incompetent in there because we're not really able to pull off any research here. So anybody else from that family, you don't have to be good at researching, you just have to be like from that family, really. Anyone at all. Literally, oh, actually, hold on, I think I missed a few people. I was looking at the wrong part of the, the icon. You are from the family. I was looking over here, like the, the icon would be here. I don't know, I'm, I'm just... I'm a hot mess, clearly. All right, uh, Adia Taunus Kalatis, welcome to the research staff. And that takes care of that. So uh, we'll, we resolved that problem with no no worry there. Solid stuff. Military experience is on the rise again. Very good. Oh, um, oh yeah, I need 80. Or no, I, don't need, I need 100, don't I? Yes, 95, okay. I'm, I'm not sure where that number is coming from. It doesn't say in the tooltip how it's calculated, and I wish that it did, because this is changing by 5 every so often. So we'll just presume 95 is the amount. And so I, maybe I, will I wait until Londinium is changed? Because the thing is, like, I am planning to do more than one war for the North, so the, the Northern War won't necessarily be a huge, enormous war. There is some value to doing the war earlier while this war is still happening and distracting these members of the uh, Defensive League. Hmm. And my levy was diminished? Maybe because the total percent of people in my nation that are Akeni was reduced. I don't know. We have to wait until the end. We have to basically wait until March 1st to even declare war, so that shouldn't matter at all. I suppose we could just go ahead with the Northern War. I think the value of having Lindenium as the capital during the war isn't actually very significant. And I'd rather start things off while these mercenaries aren't available, just for extra safety. And we can hire these mercenaries for a very cheeky... Well, actually, they'd be in danger starting up there. That being said, I kind of want to hire them just to get them out of the availability for these other nations. 
That being said, I don't know how much money these other nations have. They've been sitting around the entire game just collecting money from their incomes of almost nothing. So it's, it's hard to tell how much money these folks will actually have. Either way, on March 1st, we will take a look at the situation and possibly take some actions. All right, let's see here. I could also hire these mercenaries and then wait for them to build up their morale and then go into the war. That would probably be a much better idea. I think I... Hmm. It's five. So I could I could uh, maintain this mercenary group. I think the thing is, if I hire these mercenaries, because these guys just got back up to 6,000, and then I have my levy up, the two forces together, in fact, even just the mercs on their own, could defeat these mercenaries if they were hired... And if these guys are hired, I could then hire these mercenaries. The thing is, the AI doesn't seem to hire mercenaries outside their own territory that often that I've seen, so I may be overthinking. And something else I should keep in mind as well, um, they uh, are all individually going to bring their own four-stack armies, but they can't combine or like pool their money to hire mercenaries, which is actually a feature that would be cool to see implemented when uh, allies can agree to combine their, their meager money to afford mercs. But of course, it's not just the entry cost, it's the monthly amount. And if they were to hire mercs, it would probably drain their limited money so quickly because they don't have the crazy trade empire that I am starting to have. The mercs would defect, uh, possibly to our side, I think, as a mechanic, but they'd at least defect from their side if they weren't paid for long enough. So I think we can probably pull it off. I think what I'll do is... I'm going because it'll be a four stack. So like, I think what I'll do is I'm going to hire these mercenaries. And um, when they reach full morale, I will uh, send them in at the start of the war against... Uh, first off, I'll try and stack wipe the Cordovian forces immediately. Because again, Brigantia and uh, Carweta, who may or may not join the war, and Persia, who has their army destroyed, presumably, they're going to be up here. They're distracted. I think they're sieging down... Uh, Oh, to Dini? I wish I had a ship to go investigate that. But what I'll do is I'll send these mercs in to fight the Cornoians as quickly as I can. I need to try and prevent these armies from from uh, joining together. And then I'll use these mercs to try and siege down Wiroconium. And at the same time, get my levy up, uh, send them over. Although, actually, hold on. Waiting until Londinium is my capital is actually strategically helpful because it cuts away possibly like two months of travel time for my levy to get over here into position. Hmm. I still... Hmm. No, I don't want to wait any longer. I'm a little worried about this war in the north ending and Brigantia being freed up to come south. Not that their forces would, like, really swing everything, but it's another army that would be roaming around, potentially causing trouble. So I think this part of my territory is so well fortified, I can get away with stationing my mercenaries in uh, Alauna, well, hmm, yes, because Alauna is outside the zone of control of any of these forts. Because if we look at the fort map mode here, um, all of this uh, this hatched area is all fort zone of controlled. So they can't go very far into my nation anyways. So, all right, we have a plan. We're going to hire the mercenaries. Very good. Move you to Alauna. Let's move through here. That's well, actually, no, I want to get my morale up. So we're going to move. We'll take the long way around to get our morale going. Get over to Alauna, and then when the war starts, immediately go into Leto uh, Kentum, because this will be the only war target to give us ticking war score. Remember, we're going to declare war on Cornoia for Dabunia, which means Le Leto Kentum is their only territory that our war goal will, will target. It's also the, the provincial capital, so that's why. We'll get this under control. Try and we'll, we'll try to rush this way. Hmm. Actually, I think what I'll do. Okay, I've changed my mind again. We're going to go here. When the war starts, rush into Wericonum to try and kill their army or, like, get a first hit off them. And then from here, uh, go... Well, we can't see it from here. From here, go, like, around back over to Leto Kentum to get it under control. I want to start off the war with a first strike to weaken them. I may not be able to stack wipe them, but I will be able to get off some damage right away. And it'll send them running away, importantly. And that'll buy more time for my army to reach. So that's our plan. We've got it figured out. 
So uh, October 1st or so, we'll have to remember, pause for the omen. But that may be around the time the war actually starts, given uh, how much time it'll take for this morale to raise up. And we know from experience, reorganizing is probably not worth the extra money just for the 10% more morale recovery. Honestly, the reinforcement speed bonus for this is more important than the morale thing in terms of when I would use this is to recover a super depleted army more than anything else. And our economy is still fine with these mercs hired, so that's really handy. Can you tell I have been drinking a lot of coffee today? I have so much energy for this series right now, it is crazy. But I'm really like pumped to be making these videos. It's just really fun for me, and uh, the fact that folks are watching it and enjoying it is really cool. So I really appreciate it. We can go up to speed three right now because we're at peacetime. On we go. Centralization is extremely good. We could actually change another law, actually. Yes, we could do that. We could do the last one here. We could grab a uh, desired freeman ratio in cities or desired citizen ratio. This is an interesting thing to figure out. Um, hmm. I actually think we may not change these laws. Our centralization will reach the cap of 100 very soon. And uh, these are both like good things to have as we lose the tribal status. That being said, the tribal reform will take a while to sort of go through, and there's no need to start changing people to freemen or, tri or citizens before we lose those malices to having freemen and citizens. We still have a lot of bonuses for tribesmen, so no need to rush on this. This does cost a lot of, well, this also costs political influence, so we can't do it anyways, so that's fine. We'll just leave that alone. Can I see how this war is actually going? Score is plus 61 for Brigantia and Vododinia. They might separate piece uh, Parisia, who I think is probably the war target. I guess we'll see. The chiefs of Wente Iconorum have taken it upon themselves to free a sizable quantity of privately owned slaves. We could intervene if we think it's best. Letting slaves get too comfortable could have repercussions. So we would make some slaves in Wente Iconorum freemen, speaking of freemen, and boost up Donwin's popularity. I'm actually thinking this might be a good idea. I don't really need lots of slaves right now. Then having more freemen is not a bad thing at all, because they could eventually... Uh, or I could make some money, actually. Hmm. I think gaining the popularity is handy, but not super critical. Uh, gaining the corruption is fine. Losing the popularity could be an issue, but we're about to go to war, and she'll have a lot of opportunities to get popular from that. And then we'd also get... 35 oh, my music stopped by the way uh 35 gold i think since we're about to be in a war i think i'd rather play it safe and get the gold just for a little bit more money in our pockets now we have a pretty big treasury but wars have a funny tendency of draining our treasury real quick and we saw with the previous war that or the war from two wars ago against these guys that a war that even a few things go wrong can really cost us many many months of expensive mercenary upkeep so we're going to play it safe. Sorry, Donwin. You'll have to take the hit to your popularity. I'm sure you'll be okay. Well, maybe not. <laughs> uh, we'll hope. We'll see who our next tribal chief is. It'll be another very old character after Donwin passes away because it's just whoever is uh, the most prominent after her, right? So probably Keltrum, but hopefully we don't have to deal with that super soon. I, I just hope that that doesn't have to happen until after we fully secure... The Britannia region just for maximum uh, convenience, but it's fine if it does happen like that. Hmm. If you grab this option as well, we'll worry about this when uh, we have a bit more influence to throw around. <laughs> and we could also, here's another thing we can do as well. After we finish taking the Britannia region, we can actually use the decision Unite Britannia, which uh, changes us to Britannia gives us the Federated Tribe Government form and does some other modifiers, which should not impact our ability to reform out of the tribal state. But the Federated Tribal form, I think, is a little better as a transitionary form to the settled tribe form that we're in right now. Something I may do, I'm still sort of deciding if we want to abandon the Akeni identity a little bit and just say we are Britannia. Of course, Akenia, or rather Akeni, will remain our uh, native population. So. We also get a bunch of free province investment, so this is something I'll probably do. I'll have to think about this a little bit. I'm trying to think if there's any downsides to picking that option. Probably not, but I suppose we'll see. 
I'm also going to let my stability just run up here, uh, just for extra safety. Hmm. Sack of the Br Brigantia Shrine. Really? Brigantia? Brig wait. Oh, wait, hold on. Um, oh, so not Brigantia the nation, Brigantia the unrelated deity. Okay. The Great Shrine in Brimenium, which is in Vododinia. So the Brigantia Shrine was sacked by Brigantia. Wow, that's confusing. Who thought of this? <laughs> Who's been naming the nations after the gods in this one-to-one -one way? Yikes. All right. Uh, anyways. Uh, well, I'm already... Well, <laughs> okay, here's, here's some next-level strategy, grand strategy here. Do I try and improve my relation with Brigantia to somehow influence their behavior in the upcoming war? What do they think about me right now? They hate me because I'm super aggressive, and they know that I eye their lands. So let's go ahead and just tell the world that Brigantia kind of sucks. And we're going to put that put that into action here pretty soon. All right, one more month to go. Luckily, this will not overlap at the start of the war, so I won't miss it super likely. Um, let's just get, get up to October 1st here. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Oh, all right, I paused it. <laughs> I wish if they CA uh, CA if uh, Paradox ever came back to modify this game or add any feature, please, please, please add an option to auto pause the game when your omen becomes available. The omen is a time based thing. It is very frustrating when this becomes out of sync with the time. Because if you get it wrong and you really care to have it happen at the same time as your five month ticks, you have to wait five, or sorry, five year ticks. You would have to wait five years to resync it, which is extremely inefficient. And someone who would care about this probably cares about the efficiency. So please just add that. It will not take that much. Or if it's in the game, let me know that it's in the game because I would love to know that. Anyways, um, <laughs> so we could pick the manpower recovery as we're about to go to war. However, we have a pretty big manpower, so this would not be a waste within the next five years. We would not, like, uh, you know, th this would not be wasted, essentially. Plus, we'd probably recover manpower that we lost in the upcoming war. Uh, however, 10% of 37 is about 3.7. So let's say it rounds up to four. An extra four manpower for uh, five years, four manpower per month for five years, not really better than uh, 0.13 monthly ruler pop gain. Plus, we were just on the manpower recovery speed bonus because of our previous uh, war two wars ago against the Western allies. And Donwin's popularity has not been very secure during that time. So we're going to go back to Maponos, our old friend, to help uh, Donwin's popularity get tipped off here. And if she does pass away, then at least it's slowing it down right now. If she does pass away, this will help out whoever the future uh, chief is. All right, that's taken care of. There. Centralization looking real solid here as well. Yale and Denium. Settlement, uh, or civilization maximum of 31. That's what you like to see. Very good. It's competing with our capital in that regard. That's great. All right. Um, oh, my, my pol uh, political influence is actually almost towards 95. So maybe I will wait just a little bit to move the capital just to help out with my levy getting over... If we get a political influence event right now, I would be pretty pleased. So, a man can dream. I suppose we'll see what, what happens here. <laughs> uh, yeah. But it's a little unlikely that'll, that'll happen. That'd be really, really lucky. Plus, the mercs are still recovering, so we have to wait still. If the AI ever looked at things that uh, were like contextual, like army placement, this would certainly be a little suspicious, you'd think, but I suppose... We have to just wonder what they think, if they think at all, which they may not. <laughs> okay, I think we'd have to wait probably about another eight months for this, so I think I, I don't really want to wait that much longer. Oh, hold on. The war ended. Okay, so this is what I was worried about. They I think they just ended it a moment ago. The mercs weren't fully morale up yet, so I didn't make a mistake by not declaring war sooner. So, okay. What does this mean for the the situation? Well, we're already committed to the war. We have the mercs hired. It would have caught. So if I were to delay now for a different time to do the war, it would have cost us a hundred gold, plus 
maybe another 50, 25 to 50 gold of lost income from having the mercs up and recovering. What is the situation here with, uh, oops, there we go. Uh, I, I forget that you can like do this with the camera. <laughs> um, so Brigantia, oh, wait a moment. They left the, oh, look at this. Brigantia left the defensive league because of that internal war. Wow. I'm, this is a completely free war now. I didn't even, well, I, I need mercs anyways, but I could have gotten away with a smaller merc stack because now I'm only going to fight uh, Cortania and Cornoia. They're each other's allies, and they're the only two members of the league. This is actually incredibly lucky. Now, the two wars I'll fight are clearly this war, and then a follow-up war against Brigantia and its allies. Because these two nations probably hate Brigantia and will not ally with them, or be in a defensive league with them again. So this is extremely lucky, actually, the fact that I waited to do the war until this. Alright, almost there. <laughs> One or two more months. And it being winter probably shouldn't matter, but I suppose we'll see. And since now I don't really need to um, worry about the timing and like doing it before a war ends, maybe should I wait to move the capital? Because the thing is, I can't move the capital until I'm at peace. And would the war against uh, Cornoia and Cortania really take a super long time? Possibly. Ah, uh, man. 95. It's just... I'm so close, though. All right, I'm going to wait. Actually, hold on. I'm going to one more month to be at exactly 100%. I think I'm going to wait to do the, the capital thing. I don't want to wait too long. I'm scared of these guys making a new ally in the north. If one of them allies Brigantia again, just for security reasons, that would really mess things up here. So we're not going to chance it. We're just going to go. All right, so these two are defensively in a league with each other. They won't call anyone else in, and they can't. So we're going to enact the plan now. We're going to go to war with Cornoia with the war role of Dabunia. And that is correct. The Northern War begins. All right, the Britannia local power of Cornoia and Cortania have all rallied together to defend in the war. All right, move on in and try and get their army as it's raising. All right, it wasn't even at 100. That's kind of annoying. No, it is. It's just a little... It's rounding down, so that's fine. Um, yeah, deception's fine. And we're going to raise our levy for even more manpower. It's not even a numbers thing. It's more of like a having folks running around doing uh, area control thing. Um, where's my levy at? Here we go. Back up to five. That's handy. Very good. Uh, the usual weird split. This time we have more chariots, which is kind of nice, actually. Uh, let's uh, set you. Did I even set them in the previous war? I might not have. Oh, ah, well. Um set you to skirmishing and we'll just well this war is a bit more consequential so we're gonna actually make sure that that's set up correctly have you lead with your deception chariots i don't know if this matters at all but i'm just gonna do that there attachment allowed you're gonna attach and then you are gonna head over we're gonna basically Mm, let's head over to Benawenta and then see how Cortania reacts, because I might be destroying the Cornoian army here just right at the start. All right, let's go. Or will they just not spawn, because they know that I'm there? That would actually be kind of smart of the AI to not do that. So if I just don't allow them to spawn their army, I'll just be fighting the four or five unit stack of Cortania, which is handy. So I'll take that. All right, we have this under siege, very good. So if, I, oh, okay, they spawn there. And I can't, I don't think I can go straight there. And if I try and move, well, yeah, it's fine. I can break the siege for one day. So they spawned over here, that's fine. Um, actually, now that I've done this, I think what I will do, hmm. All right, we're gonna go ahead. Okay, I can move through here for some reason. We're going to make our way over to Alauna as planned. I thought I would actually get their army to spawn as I was moving in. I probably should have not started off moving in, but you live and you learn. So let's go ahead and make our way down there. Just try and scare them away. What I want to do is get uh, Leto uh, Kentum under siege and under occupation, rather, and then do everything else, because otherwise the ticking war score will start to really add up against us. What? What's going on? Oh. 
that's fine. They're just on the they're moving around, so I don't think they're gonna stay there. Okay, they're all going north, that's fine. You don't have any other allies, do you? No. Alright. So what I can do oh, hello. Um that's uh uh Duro Regutum on the sixth of May. You're arriving here long before that. So we're gonna escape this well, this wouldn't this wouldn't really threaten me. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my main stack to go after uh, Leto Ketum, and then this here is a level 1 fort. I can siege this with my levy stack and have this mercenary force chase around the armies over here, which is much a much safer way of arranging things, so we're going to do it like that. Should be fine. In fact, we're going to have you make your way over to try and do it like that. So that from Reta you can go back south for a better movement, or right, you are gonna go like that. All right, looking good so far. They're gonna come in here. They're gonna get into the zone of control of my forts here in a moment, so they're not gonna get very far doing that. <laughs> they can go siege my capital if they want to. That's not a siege they're gonna succeed at very easily. If the whole like lot of them want to come over here, that's fine. My mercs will just come kill them. This is an acceptable thing for them to do, I suppose. All right. All right. <laughs> I don't. Again, the AI like why they're prioritizing my distant capital as opposed to any of the closer forts that control all the movement around here. Big mystery. I don't know what they're doing, but it's fine. I'm not gonna look a gift horse in the mouth. Although the issue is, if I then chase after them, this army could sweep around and come threaten my main stack. Although if it's only 2,000, we're probably safe to continue chasing. If this ends up being higher than 2,000, this force will have to leave just out of safety. I can't afford to have my entire levy get smacked around. All right, let's go up to Duro Regutum to see what they do. Once they get this, we'll move over to Wero Canoeum. Where are you going, uh, Bramuloeum? Let's uh, head that way. All right, looks like that's what they're doing. That's fine. I get the ticking more score under control. Uh, let's see here. Um, make our way. Actually, mm. yeah, this, this should be fine. Can we catch them in the marsh? Not quite. All right, get the siege going. But we will catch them in Wintic and Norm. We'll be defending in the plains. That's fine against a much smaller force. Should be no trouble at all. Oh, they're going to come in as well? All right. Once they're locked in, we'll just go punish these guys in the plains. And then we'll swing down south. So yeah, this will be a pretty decisive thing here. All right. 20th of August. All right. Here we go. Up here in Branodunum. This is about what I expected. Oh, Granary is raided. We're having this event right now. Province of Ordowikia. Uh, I will pay to get less of an effect and get some loyalty with Ordowikia. I conquered Ordowikia pretty recently, so I'd like to get the loyalty boost. Grab that. And we can afford to pay for it, so no big deal. Alright, we killed a third of them or so. And we'll just chase them into Wente Canorum, the capital itself. Which is allegedly a balanced fight, which I completely don't agree with. I don't know what that... Like, what the game is thinking here. I guess my morale isn't tip-top, but, I mean, come on. Look at these numbers. Come on, my friend. This is not a balanced, uh, decisive, like, who knows how it's going to go kind of fight here. <laughs> All right, we killed a 1,000 of them. That's really handy. Uh, and we're going to now make our way over. Let's try and grab... Hmm. I don't technically need to, like, take all the stuff in the northern parts of their land, but it would help me, like I said, position better for fighting Brigantia in the future. So we will go ahead and go for their other, you know, provincial capitals. So we're going to go for uh, Kusine, if anything, just to distract them with another target to run after, and then we'll go after their fort here in Rate. So it should be good. And this time, I'm not going to disband my mercs early or anything. This is not a war that I want to make any stupid micro-mistakes. Also, this blockade is actually kind of a legitimate blockade, so that's a little annoying. 
I think once I am no longer a tribe, I will feel economically comfortable enough to start investing in a bit of a fleet of some sort. There's this. Kanoina Diwika has suggested a small addendum to an often referenced law pertaining to the right of the common folk. It should only be a small effort to push this through the clan council. Gain stability for political influence. Well, since I can't spend my 95 for the capital anyways, I may as well get the stability. I'll have over 95 by the end of the war anyways, so this is an acceptable trade since we're in wartime. And I think stability, uh, once it hits 50, does it balance? I'm just trying to remember. I don't, maybe not. I think I'm thinking of something else. I think I'm thinking of a different game even. No, I'm not. Hold on. It says it right there in the, in the tooltip. After decaying towards 50... Yeah, so it decays towards or away from... It, it decays away from 50, basically. Uh, so once it's above 50, then my stability will um, uh, start to decay back towards 50. Okay, okay. So that that's fine. Um, I don't know where I was going with that, but that's a, that's a thing to be aware of. <laughs> Alright, let's get this down. This will give us a lot of war score because it'll control a lot of territory, and then we'll use the mercs to go smack them around by Rite, or in Rite, in fact. Good. Let's not depopulate anything, please. Please be careful. Um, in fact, I could go to Derbentio just for even more occupation madness, uh, even more war score. We'll demoralize them a little bit, make the peace deal a little easier. We may be able to pull off some sort of preemptive peace deal with just a huge war score, but since I want to fully annex everything... Oh, Donwin recovered from her ailment? Was Donwin ill? She's ailing, because she's 50. Uh, curious. Is that still the case? Hold on. Um... She is ailing, but uh, she's incapable now. Okay, so she's just kind of like losing it at the ancient age of 50, which in this time period is definitely old age. Okay, well, I'm not so sure Donwin is long for this world at this point. Who is the likely successor? Let's take a look at this now, because her health has now come up here. Um, the likeliest successor is indeed Keltrum, as I expected, although he is probably not in the best of health either. He's frail. Yikes. All right. Uh, who's next after him? <laughs> um, the next likeliest would be uh, Mandu Brachius, a character who I don't think has really come up at all in the the, uh, the series that much yet. He's the chief of the, the newer uh, Kel Keltii uh, clan. Oh, he's near death. Oh, never mind. <laughs> he's really ill as well. He's the one with this. Wow, all my characters are just old and ailing, and Inamicus is also really old. Maybe we'll have a bunch of deaths pretty soon, and new uh, clan chiefs will kind of rise up and kind of reset the uh, the dynamics of everything. I suppose we'll see what happens in that regard. Should be interesting, but hopefully no big turnovers of uh, our population are happening during this war, ideally. I suppose we'll see what happens there. Oh, that's annoying. Um, all right, got that. Good. All right. Um, now... Are they going to try and... Oh, yeah. So these two forces together could definitely threaten um, our force in Uroconium. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go after the force in Dewa. Because this force on its own, especially not right now, can't attack this force. But this force is a little closer to being in danger. So we're going to go for that and then double back for uh, Rite in a bit later. Rite is level 1 fort, so that's handy. Nothing too crazy there. Is this force not going to move? They're just going to let me go for it? That'd be fine. I'll take this. I'll cross the river to go fight you. All right, from one clan to another. Some of our clan chiefs, Keltrum Orgatoris, or one of our clan chiefs, Keltrum Orgatoris, has suggested moving some of the people of clan Inimicus to his rule. We've seen this event before. Okay, we can lose centralization, lose gold and influence, and then gain loyalty with Keltrum? Or, or sorry, gain centralization and lose all those things. Okay, we've, I've said before... This is the time where losing centralization is fine, so we'll grab this. Plus, Inimicus is less loyal, so that's fine to have that happen. All right, imminent battle. Should be super fine up here in Dewa. Oh, yeah, their morale's already messed up from the start. Even though we cross the river, we will take this fight handily. Our tactic wasn't the best one, though, but that's fine. These mercs uh, do not have to really survive that much, just enough to... What are you doing? Oh, you're going down there. All right. 
Now that that's... Well, I guess we'll siege down Demo while we're here. May as well, right? Like, <laughs> just get it under, under control. These armies might run around and try and unsiege things, but we can send the mercs after them to stop them. And it is safer to use the mercs for that, just because technically... Ooh. Okay, these population numbers are kind of scaring me. We're taking a lot of slaves right now, and I'm a little nervous about some of these two population territories. We've been extremely lucky to avoid depopulating things in the series so far, but I know how easy it is for that to kind of happen unintentionally. Alright, um... Let's make our way back over this way. Once we secure this uh, fort, we can move this force over to Siege Reta, and that will make things a lot easier. Oh, it looks like they hired some mercenaries after all, but a little too late for that. They hired this two-stack. Well, we know what's going to happen to them in a moment here. Let's go ahead and go meet them up there. Oh, they're trying to siege down um, <laughs> uh, Gobanium. All right, if you say so. They definitely cannot pull that off. Now, if we're lucky, uh, this siege will end at the 35%. That would be ideal. Nope. Uh, nothing ever goes well for me in this series. <laughs> ah, well. All right. They are going to stand there. Did they, are they? Oh, there they go. Uh, dang it. These guys are going to run around and be annoying. All right, let's go to Lindum. Try and catch... Where are you, where are you guys going? You going to go join that siege? Actually, these guys could threaten my main force here. Let's, uh, let's not go too far away, I think, actually. Once this force gets its morale up, it could be an issue. Let's try and get them while they're in Reta. Maybe I can catch them in there. That'd be ideal. Before they link up with the mercs. There we go. Okay, we're going to catch something in there. Possibly the smaller group. Oh, we just took the town. The sacking of Wiroconium. Donwin has led her men to glorious victory during the siege. Handy. So I could grab the, the big money amount and the population here probably would be fine but let's not get too hasty there let's just play it safe with these populations let the looting be gentle all right and now can i oh, oh i actually caught them in reta all right we're gonna catch them down there and then meanwhile over here battle of reta going super great as i hoped well pretty great i should say I was hoping the mercs would come this way, just for extra killing action. Alright, okay, we killed the smaller group, and now we're going to fight the bigger group? This is one of those weird combination battles. Alright, we killed another thousand or so, that's good. Off they go. We'll siege. Actually, I don't need to siege this, because this is going to fall to the fort zone of control momentarily. I just need Reta under my control, and then we win the war, no matter how many soldiers they have. So if we can get this into a siege race with the mercenaries, that's going to be it for the war there. We'll have these forces come over to Banawenta to just kind of help guard this area here. Or, actually, better use of them, send them to Reta and then send the mercs to go do the fighting. So I'll wait till the these guys arrive, then I'll send the mercs after those mercs, just for extra safety. Oh, we're going to catch these guys completely by accident. <laughs> That was not on purpose, but... Oh, we're going to catch them all by accident. Oh, that's extra handy. All right. Super good. Let's get the stack wipe. No, not quite. But still, an impressive display from Donwin. Uh, or whoever is leading this army. Led by Donwin. Well, they're... Okay, never mind. Not led by Donwin necessarily, but maybe led by Donwin. It's a little unclear. All right. So we're good. We can go like that. Um, oh, they're running north now. Uh, because, so here's the annoying thing. What those mercs that they hired is doing is keeping me from disbanding my mercs. I cannot safely keep just my levy while those mercs are hired. I might have been able to chance it with these forces with just my levy. But with those mercs around, I have to keep my mercs on retainer, basically. So we're going to just go with that. <laughs> okay, I think what we're going to do is I'm going to send my mercs on a bit of a mission try and go north so we're gonna come around like that and strike these guys by accident too another handy little thing there i keep doing this not on purpose but uh it, it's working out for me there go ahead and grab these guys get the stack wipe there we go that's the stack wipe i was looking for now we're way way safer so that's good all right 
and my manpower is even totally fine. We're back up above 95 uh, political influence already, so that's super handy. In peacetime, we will be able to click this button. Although, now the, we'll have to move some McKinney tribesmen over there to get that fixed. All right, where are you going to? You have some food problems? Oh, this army's out of food. That's okay, they're already taking siege attrition, and I think the supply limit is fine for them, so... Yeah, they're just taking siege attrition, so should be okay. Nope, not quite. I Actually, I don't want to kill these mercs necessarily, although, if I do damage these mercenaries, these mercenaries came from up here. I think they're the northern Caledonian mercs. These are mercs that Brigantia won't be able to hire while they're recovering. So actually doing some damage to these mercs has a future war benefit that I might want to pull off somehow. They're going to um, Benoelum. Let's try and cut them off up here. Or catch them like that. Okay, we're not going to be able to do it like that. That's fine. These guys aren't going to be able to pull off anything in their damaged state. Let's just hope we can get the siege done. I can't take, so the thing is, I, I need to do the siege because I can't take this location unless it's under control because it is a fortified location. So I have to unfortunately do the siege and do, ah, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. Oh, I got really scared for a sec there. The panic in my voice was audible. I think it's because it, I didn't let any time tick by while that was happening. But okay, we, we avoided that disaster that almost just happened right there. All right, now I think they're making a move for Rekta. Let's go ahead and try and uh, let's head to well, where... Oh, they're going to come here. Okay, that's fine. Or not. All right. Come on, Rekta, just fall. Let this war end. <laughs> I know this, this part's gone over time. Donwin received narrow-minded. All right, that's fine. We're not going to worry about that. All right. If these mercs take a bunch of damage, it's fine. It actually probably helps me if they're less available. I'm going to wait for them to move. Actually, can I? I can, so we're going to wait. They're locked. Now we go. We just want to damage these mercenaries enough to make them uh, sacking of Rete. Took a slave. What's our population here like? I can get away with this. I'm going to kill nobles as well, yeah. All right, let's get some extra money and some popularity and whatnot. None shall hide in the sacking of Rete. Very good. And now we're going to go ahead and just move in and just try and damage these mercs as much as we can, just for extra super unnecessary grand strategy purposes. And then we'll end the war once the stuff is all under control. How far away are we here? Uh, 21st of January. There we go. And I guess we'll just fight these guys, too, just because they're coming in. Big battle that doesn't need to happen, but hey, why not end this war with a bang, right? All right, we lost uh, 1,662. We killed... Actually, this was not a very good engagement for us, honestly, so that's a little annoying. That's fine, though, and now uh, once this is finished sieging... Actually, we can just go for it now, because uh, we have the capitals. Okay. Wait, hold on. Oh, uh, yeah, I need to take the territory for that to count. Okay, I got a little scared there for a sec. Okay. So we're going to get the war goal, obviously. We're going to get try and just get all of this. Um, in terms of the provinces, we're going to have these, like, split borders, uh, sp split provinces with Brigantia. That's fine. I'd rather just get these nations completely dissolved and prepare a much uh, smaller frontier for the Brigantian War, which will happen shortly. Um on uh let's make sure i'm doing this right all right and this will include this part that i haven't fully sieged yet that's fine okay let's go ahead and accept this gives us a lot of aggressive expansion but uh this is at this point like we're on a roll we cannot like slow down the momentum as we prepare to fight Brigantia, who is smaller than us even now but is definitely going to be our biggest opponent yet for sure here it is my tribal chief, the Britannia local power of Cornoia, accepted our generous peace offer. Terms, Cornoian Dabunia to Akenia, Cornoian Cornoia to Akenia, Cortani Dabunia to Akenia, Cortani Cortania to Akenia, Cortani 
Cornoia to Akenia and Cornoian Ordowikia to Akenia. That's what I like to see. And y'all already know what's going to happen to their leaders. Into prison they go. Slavery awaits and profit awaits as well. And look at that. Oh my gosh. First, first thing first. Out of the way. Get disbanded. I want to see my big name. Oops. There we go. And, uh, yeah. There it is. The biggest Ikenia yet. You love to see it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope that you enjoyed this extra long and epic first Northern War episode. And I'll see you next time for the preparation for and probably the beginning of the second Northern War slash the war to finish unifying Britannia. See you all next time.